When you book a Best Western hotel, <laughs> you get all the great stuff you'd expect from a big brand, plus the feel-good glow of knowing every booking supports proudly independent hotels. Like Roger Thorpe Manor in Yorkshire, run by the Metcalf family. So with 290 unique places to stay, you're not just booking, you're booking good. Best Western, booking good. Welcome back to Edinley for our latest episode of Box 2 in partnership with Best Western Hotels GB, supporting local, proudly independent hotels. Welcome back to Box 2 for this, another weekly roundup, and I'm joined this week by the Leeds Rhinos wheelchair rugby league coach now, James Simpson, former player, World Cup winner, jack of all trades, a little bit like myself, mate, how are you? And uh, how much did you enjoy the win against the Catalan Dragons? At the weekend. Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, we're pretty special, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, being here at the weekend watching the game, I, t I tell you what, mate, I were up and down, like, do you know, <laughs> up and down, then banging on seats, and my heart rate were up and down as well. But yeah, it were, it were a brilliant game, and I reckon for a neutral watching that, you'd yep. probably fall in love with the game off it because that was fantastic. Blake Austin seems to be building a season as time goes on. We had him here in box two last week. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win in, uh, in Nottingham against Northumbria. Had a great season though, and uh, credit to the boys for getting there. But Blake, his game kicked a couple of 40-20s, come on in the second half, run like a middle, bumping people off, and then put Richard Myler over for first try. What was your impression of Blake this week? I, that kick from the corner, when we were pinned in, nowhere yeah. to go, and they compressed and they put that crossfield kick in, that Reese corner and went for it. You yeah. know, that was phenomenal. It just shows that, that vision of, and that willingness to try something different, to be like, not the, we've always done this, so we'll do this. It's like, why not put a kick in here? Why not try something different? But I'm, I've, I remember, I'm a Canberra Raiders fan, and I remember Blake playing over there, and watching him run now, I get like flashbacks to that, of watching him getting the ball and now I'm seeing something and going for it and backing himself. And sure. I feel like he's got the freedom to run a lot more now. And it definitely showed at the weekend, you know, when the platform was there for him or when there was a little half break, he was going for it and he was running. And he might not get all the way through, but he's getting his nose through. And off the back of that, people are getting that momentum. And it's, yeah, it's just creating so much more. And, and it's so much more threatening if, if he's running. Because yep. they're expecting him to pass. They're expecting him to pass. But then he runs and he goes for it. And you can see them doubting themselves a bit, the defenders, having to turn in or maybe step a bit. And it creates things somewhere else. People talked about it being a game of two hours. I don't think the half-time score reflected the actual performance. Got a bit sticky at moments. Some things didn't stick. We didn't quite execute and, and turn... Um, field position into points but it always looked like we were threatening and that was going to be the story of the second half now a lot of fans were asking I wonder what Rowan Smith said at half time but the pivotal turn into the second half was astounding and I was just really impressed in the way that the boys powered through the middle with some strong runs as opposed to playing running first and Catalan just never recovered did they? No I think I think moving around quite a bit early on tied them out a bit and then yeah. when you start running them direct they, they just couldn't keep up with it. You could see the momentum we were getting was just was just flowing really nicely. But I think in the first half, like I didn't doubt we weren't going to win. Like in that first half, we had chances where the, that kick through through Caesar and Harry just misses it with his fingertips. That's yeah. that's a try. Sure. Do you know that the pass uh, the pass where Myler put Zayn over like slightly forward, but that's a try. So you're like actually, if they'd have been if they'd have worked and they'd have gone through, that's we're going in at half time like even. Do you know like I didn't think. We, we weren't going to bring it back. I had confidence that we were going to build into it. And you could see it in the first half that I just, I just had faith we were, going to, we were going to do it in the end. Harry Newman getting two, could have had three or four, to mm. be fair. At a moment, though, ended up in the bin, and then you start thinking, wow, this is going to be a challenge now. But we actually looked better when we were playing for 12 men. He come back on, injected himself in the game, and I thought it was outstanding. Give me your thoughts on Harry Newman's... Well, he's a phenomenal player, isn't he? Do you yeah. know, and if he hadn't have been injured last year, he'd have been in that World Cup squad, uh, World Cup squad. And I think, I think when you get that good and you have so much passion for it, it can show in different ways. And sometimes maybe some quite don't quite go the way you thought it was going to go. You can like, have an outburst for it. But I think with Harry as well, he's, he's had a few stints out injured, so he really wants to prove himself and get out there and show everyone what he can do. And I feel like if you get Things that st don't start going your way, you might get a bit frustrated that you're like, I can do this and I want to show you how good I am. Let me show you how good I am. But you take stints out injured, you, I think you could put more pressure on yourself when you come back to perform. So I don't know if that's one of the little things there, but he's a phenomenal player. And he's, I think he's one of those players who's going to be around this club for a long time. 
and I think you're going to hear his name for years to come as well, doing amazing things like domestically and internationally as well. Oh, mate, he's unbelievable. I've seen him as a kid coming through, squatting nearly 250 kilos. He knew he was going to be special, and I don't think he's reached his peak. We're a better side with him in there. Um, he's a world-class strike and threat. On game day, we're in the cafe bar, giving some taster sessions to fans who want to yeah. come and get in a wheelchair. How did that go on? Give us a little bit of an insight of the science behind the actual chairs themselves. Yeah, we had, we had the World Cup trophy in, in the cafe bar and we had two chairs in there for people just come and try it out get in get some pictures with the trophy and it the feedback we had on the day and, and the event was absolutely fantastic we had probably 100 over 100 people queuing up at times to get pictures with the trophy and pictures with like me Tom and Nathan who played in the World Cup final and we were like we made a point of taking time to talk to everyone you know explain the game encourage them to get in chairs and have a push around and and it was like kids who were four and five all the way up to like 60 year old people who were coming to see the trophy and getting shares and have a go and the, it was absolutely fantastic and it, it for us as the players as well it's it's such a nice like feeling to be so integrated into the club as a whole to be there in the cafe bar people coming up to us you know treating us like like the like the players and and, and, and the rhinos players that we are and it's amazing for me that journey that we've gone on as the wheelchair players from just being in the shadows absolutely in the shadows nobody knew about the game to now being on the world stage being here you know with the world cup trophy going on the field at half time to, to get interviewed and and one of the things we were doing was explaining to people how the the wheelchairs how intricate they are how they're, they're a bit of sporting equipment at the end of the day and, and like like an f1 car or a, like or, or, or like a, a set of skis or, or a snowboard you don't you need to get the best you can get and, and the top players we have the chairs are tailored to each individual player, so the top chairs are tailored to your body type, your weight, your centre of gravity, where you kind of push from, do you know how long your arms are, the chairs, will, uh, the wheels will be different heights. So each chair is designed to those players because you really want to get those little 1% margins out of them and if you've got a chair that's tailored to you, it makes such a big difference and we were explaining that to some of the people who were coming to look at the chairs and the trophy and they were fascinated by it and interested and I don't think people thought the game was taken to that minute level, do you know, at the top, and it's wheelchair. I think they thought we were all in the same chairs, and you actually know these chairs are, the top chairs are like five, six thousand pounds, some of them. But listening to what you're saying there, people might think, I would assume that it's not that accessible because you've got this really expensive and bespoke piece of equipment as well. But actually, is it easy for people to come and get involved? And how much of a, an increase in uptake have you seen since winning? The, um, the the trophies and the success of last year? It's been crazy, mate. Yeah, like, so last year I was player coach and I had eight, nine players, including myself. And now going in, stepping into the full-time coaching role, we've got nearly 30 players. Yeah. Like, enough to have two teams now. So now we've got our Super League team and we've got our community team, yeah. which they make up the bulk of the squad now, really. And my aim for them is to, A, just come and be part of the team and have activity, get in chairs, push around, have fun be fit, healthy, and then the competition will come off the back of that. So a lot of the people who come to play in the community element, they're just there for fun. Do you know, they're not going to go on TV and complete for, compete for Super League trophies. But it's not about that. I want the players to come to feel part of something bigger and just be fit and active and healthy. And we've got our own chairs. So we've got eight chairs that we got off the World Cup from the Created by Grant that we've used and there for anyone to get in to come and play. We've, we've ordered more. We've got another kind of six or eight on the way. So we're building up our own like store of chairs that anyone can get in. So you come along to a training session and we've got the kit there waiting for you. You just got to walk in the door or come in the door and we're like, there's your chair, get in it and let's get going. But it's great because I merge the sessions. So to start off with, we have everyone training together. So you've got someone who's in their third or fourth week playing the game, playing alongside guys who played in the World Cup, lifted a World Cup trophy. And that's what I really want is the team to be one giant team of people competing. Yes, they might go off and play different teams, but when we all come together, we won Rhinos Club, one wheelchair club together. Love it. Yes, exactly the same message that we're trying to impregnate right through the club. I love it, one team, one club. I wanted to ask you there, James, we had Tom Halliwell on, mm. on the chair a few weeks back, and he's the England captain. Mm. Now, you decided um, to choose Jody Boyd Ward as the Leeds Rhinos wheelchair rugby league captain, even though Tom's in that team. Just give us the reasons behind that decision and what Jordy brings to the side? Yeah, it's a tough decision because we've got a lot of leaders in that team. Like 
Nathan and Tom, they've been playing the game, like Nathan's been playing 10, 11 years. Do you know, Tom's been playing eight years. Josie's been playing about 12 years. She's played in three World Cups. You know, she's an absolutely fierce competitor. And Tom is, is the England captain, but Tom's our halfback. Right. I want him out there playing what's in front of him. I want him looking to make decisions, looking to move the ball around. I don't want him worrying about the other captaincy kind of duties and things like that. Whereas where Jodie, when they're on the field, Jodie's the, the level-headed voice. While Tom's kind of looking to create stuff, Jodie's the one who can be like, no, I need you to slow down, let's do this, let's do that. Let's put momentum on. Do you know, she's the level-headed voice we want out there. And she's a fierce competitor in defence. And that, when she's leading from the line, she's smashing people out of chair, she's getting in their face. And that's what I want from my leader, is defensively to really lead. And when people are a bit tired and you've got to defend another set, that's where I think the the true colours of those leaders step up when they have to be like, we've got to defend this now, let's keep going. And and, and that kind of all, it was a tough decision, so we've got a lot of leaders, but Jodie, I thought for me, and I, I kind of ran it by a few other people as well, she was a standout for it and she'll do an amazing job at it. And she's so experienced and she's so respected within the team and the game that, you know, it was a, it was, when I finally made the decision, it was like the decision had always been there and I just had to see it. Unbelievable. When it comes to diversity and inclusion, these guys are the flagship. Mate, I love it. I love being around you all. It's great that Jodie's um, going to be captain. Is definitely a leader and she's a number 10 as well. Yeah. Which leads me nicely into our 10s night on the 3rd of April. If you've not bought your ticket, get your tickets, get online and uh, go through to our website portal there where you can book your spot. It's going to be a great night. We've got Jamie Peacock, the Bionic Barrel, Stevie Pitchford who won the Lance Todd Trophy in 1977. We've got Barry McDermott there and Danica Prim as well, the first of uh, our women's number 10s from back in the day. Really looking forward to that evening. I'm going to be hosting that. It's going to be lots of fun, so get online and get your ticket at this link. Next up, James, is a game against Wigan, who beat Halifax, who were the Super League champions last year. They look like they might be putting the best foot forward, looking pretty strong. Having won your first game, our first game, against Warrington, 118 points to 12. That's right, yeah. Uh, in, in week one, that's a, that's a massive performance. You're looking forward to playing against Wigan? Yeah, well, I'm really looking forward to it. Do you know, they're a really good side that I have a lot of time for and I have a lot of respect for. Do you know, that the... the they take they treat wheelchair rugby league like like we do at Leeds. Yeah. You know that they're, they're part of the bigger wider club, but they're a really good team and they've built a team up around um, like Deck Roberts, Schneider and Rigby. These are guys who played in the World Cup last year and they're a really good team who play like play some good wheelchair rugby league. And I'm really excited to go up against them because it, I think this will this game is a really good acid test for both teams. Do you know like they had a really good win against Halifax and. Um, and Halifax had their Catalan players over as well, so it was a huge scout for, for Wigan to get. So wow. they'll be coming into us with a lot of confidence. So for us, it's a really big acid test, but we've played them before. We know what they're about, we know what they can do, and we've got to go out there and stick to the things we're really good at and do it. And, and I think it'll be a tight game, and I think it'll be a tough game, but I've kind of said to our guys, just hold on. Do you know, like, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. Your opportunities will come, and when they come, we take them. And that's what we're really good at, is we're really good at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with people. And then when we see half an opportunity or half a break, that's where we strike and that's where we're best. And I feel like we're confident going in, but it's going to be a game that I think we'll be talking about for a while afterwards. When you're watching the games now, James, do you miss playing? Is that temptation to want to get on and actually perform? Or are you happy and content in your mind to be able to just bark those instructions? Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Like, it, it, I go back to the World Cup. I woke up the day afterwards after winning the final and... I rang my partner Josie and I just kind of said to her on the phone, like, I've, I've made the right decision to, to retire. Do you know, I felt so fulfilled about what I'd achieved in my 10 years as a player that I'd, I'd, I genuinely feel like I've, I've got everything I wanted to out of being a player and it's time to move into coaching, do something that's challenging, do you know. And I wanted to move into coaching while I'm still really passionate about the game. If I play for another 10 years, I run the risk of maybe overstaying my welcome and losing that passion that I have now. So I want to go into coaching while I'm still really hungry and fired up to make the most of it and, and, and wheelchair rugby league is the coaching is something that's quite new across the game we haven't had a lot of players recently who've retired from playing the current game and going to coaching and that's what I'm excited about is kind of I'm hoping to try and change how wheelchair rugby league coached modernize it and, and make it a lot different than what we've always done I want to bring it into the future and, and, and I'm speaking to 
a lot of other coaches in wheelchair sports and I've met Lois to talk to her. You know, Rowan's going to mentor me as well and, and I've got this huge opportunity now to, not just for Leeds Rhinos, but for the whole game, really change how it's coached and bring it into the future and I'm really excited about it. Just looking forward uh, to OKR. OKR have got a lot of ex-Rhinos players, coaches, Maguire, Brett Delaney, Jimmy Kynos, Ryan Hall. That's a scalp that they want to take, isn't it? Especially over at their place. What the Leeds Rhinos have to be looking forward to to get a great result or thinking about this weekend. I think when you've got that many ex Rhinos players in the team, sometimes you think they want to go out there and make a point. But um, it sounds a bit cliche, but it really is like you just play your own game, don't you? Yeah. Like we need to turn up there, not think about any of that, not think about the occasion of having like like Danny Mags and everyone kind of. We need to just focus on our game and go out there and, and do what we do. And if we did what we did two days ago, do you know, out there, then we shouldn't worry about it. And, and it's like, I think it's a massive occasion as well. You've got Ryan Hall, who's just signed his extra year at Hull KR. So I think, like, yes, being an ex Rhinos player and playing for Hull KR, but him still being involved in the game at like 35, 36 and still playing at the, like, the absolute top peak and scoring tries every week, I think that's something that the fans will be excited to see as well, even though. He's playing on the opposite side, but it's, it's always a pleasure to see, isn't it? They've got some great players in there. I'm a big fan. Mikey Lewis, John Nobdell, kick Salford to bits in week two. The nuances, the variances within that side, the OKR side, they're a big threat. Who are some of the individuals as well as obviously Ryan Hall who you think are going to be dangerous for them this week? You said yourself, Tom Opacek, like, if he hadn't been injured last year, he'd have played in an NRL grand final. Yeah. You know, he, he was in that, that uh, Parramatta team that, like performed all year and and if he hadn't been injured he'd have, he'd have been there you know running out with him in, in the final so and I think he's got so much big game experience or, or so much experience in leading under that pressure like on that right on that right edge I don't think he's the kind of player who is always leading that defensive line he's getting up there he's getting people's faces he's making other centres make errors he's, he's putting shots on and I think that's why he's been brought in is for his, his leadership and, and for his talk and, and he's definitely a player out there who's going to I think he'll He'll get up there in some people's faces and ruffle some feathers, but he, he's going to be a standout. And I just think the team across the board, I think Matt Parcell, you know, like he's playing fantastic at the moment. Like, you know, when he's running from nine, he's, he's fantastic. And, and yeah, there's a lot of threats, and, but it makes it exciting, doesn't it? It's the game you want to see, and I feel like we've got what it takes to, to match it. But they've got some of those players you get excited to watch individually as well, like, like Ryan Hall, Matt, um, like Tom. They've got individual players who are exciting to watch, and I think that'll make for an exciting game across the board. But... Like, I, I don't think we'll, I'm pretty sure we'll, I'm confident we'll get the win. I am extremely confident as well after that massively emphatic win against the Catalan Dragons. Looking forward to joining Rowan Smith's Barmy Army going down to Craven Street to take on OKR. It'll be a tough game, but I'm sure the boys are up for it. And then we're back here on Easter Sunday for a massive double header as the Leeds Rhinos women's team take on the York Valkyrie, who were League Leader Shield winners in 2022. That should be an epic opening to their season and a fantastic prequel to what will be a tough game against the Huddersfield Giants. Join us down here at Edinburgh Stadium. Finally, a big thanks to our special guest, James Simpson, for joining us thanks, in mate. Box 2. Can't wait to see you next time. In the meantime, I'll see you at Craven Park. God bless.